Okay, my friends, this is one of the most serious videos I have done because so many people are affected by chronic fatigue syndrome. Now, gastrointestinal system, what's up with that related to chronic fatigue? Many with chronic fatigue syndrome have gastrointestinal GI symptoms, often unrecognized as being part of this syndrome. The commonest upper GI syndrome includes fullness and bloating after a small meal. Fullness and bloating. We're going to have to discuss why would that happen. Abdominal distension. Why? Nausea. You get sick. Loss of appetite. Now this goes back almost 20 years. Gastric emptying is slow in chronic fatigue syndrome. Well, chronic fatigue is becoming a real serious public health issue. You see that went way back like almost 20 years ago. Now there's just starting to come up gut inflammation and chronic fatigue. 2010, 2016, gut bacteria may hold the clues. 2020, irritable bowel syndrome. Now we're up to 2022, digestive problems and these chronic fatigue syndrome issues. All right, here it is right here. Chronic fatigue syndrome, poorly understood condition, its exact causes are still unknown. As medical researchers dig deeper, the potential involvement of gut bacteria is coming to the fore, revealing the microbiome may play a significant role. It plays the only role there is. And I'm going to explain to you precisely why bacteria are the only reason you're alive right now. They're the only reason you can do anything whatsoever. Your body makes nothing whatsoever. Every single thing that's made in your body, every bit of chemistry, every enzyme, every catalyst, every food breakdown, every attack on an invader, every single thing is done by these bacteria. It's not a single other molecular chemical reaction happens in your body that doesn't involve these. They create ca catalysts and enzymes which increase the speed at which molecules interact by millions of times. Beep, done! And I mean just bazillions of them and that same enzyme doesn't even get used up. It just keeps doing its job until there's nobody else that left to kill and then it goes away most elegant system you could possibly imagine and we are going to dig deep deeper and deeper look at this dw documentaries we have a million three hundred hits the mysterious disease affects millions of people worldwide chronic fatigue syndrome this me slash cfs severe neuro immunological disease not much is known about this disease well yes there is it just hasn't been examined correctly and we're going to do that right now all right i did this video right here a real world study shows the risk of getting hangry is very real they're angry upset violent and it's due to issues in your gut and one of the one of the things that was said here is right here angelina jackson you are 100% correct. I cut out all gluten and started giving my 11-year-old primal defense probiotics. That was the one I was taking, and it worked for me, too, and it worked for uh, everybody that I know. Three months ago, all right, so three months ago, she started giving her 11-year-old the probiotics, and she cut out gluten. Now, I don't know if gluten is necessary to cut out, but let's go with the probiotics transformation in him is unbelievable no more bouncing off the walls fist fighting with his brother he lost weight and a mat and a, and like magic his eczema vanished so she had results on every level because once you are, are invadable your bacteria is damaged you need to replace it I said, that's really thrilling. And, you know, and I, I have had this result from everyone, not that extreme, that happy, and having all that happen at once. But we've had good result with autism. And I mean the worst, most 
terrible cases of autism from like past a 10 down to about a 2 just by uh, you know being very careful about how much probiotics they have. Um, I know I'm making it sound overly simple but once you decide to really examine what happens in your body you realize Nothing happens that doesn't involve bacteria. Once you kill certain strains of bacteria, you can't create these specific proteins and enzymes. Let me show you what the kind of thing I'm talking about. They're not going to just accidentally appear. You're going to have to have those ends, I mean those uh, bacteria replaced, or you're going to have to put at least the enzymes back in there so that you have these ability to deal with the chemistry. You see this? These things are just so elegant, it's just beyond belief. And they come out exactly the same every time if that enzy enzyme is healthy and you have, I mean, a protein bacteria, I'm sorry. The bacteria create these enzymes, which are proteins. And every bacteria creates one type of enzyme. And if you don't have that enzyme, you can't do the job. It's simple as that. You cannot do the job. It's just like if you want to build a house and you don't have the nails, you're done. The house is going to get built. <laughs> Nothing there to hammer. This is the problem when you kill off your bacteria in your body. You have to repopulate it. Or at least you have to get these molecules floating around in there. So if they're necessary, they do that job. Alright, I showed you what the enzymes are, and they are the proteins. What are bacteria, enzymes, and chemicals? You know, chemicals, we know, do all kinds of things. Acids, salts, all that. And bacteria can make enzymes that work on all those different products. Bacteria are living cells, single-cell organisms that live in our body in the layer of what's called interstitium. They have the capability of consuming wastes of different type, reproducing and actually producing enzymes. Better said, bacteria are the factories that produce enzymes. That's the key right there. If you don't have these bacteria, you don't have a factory. You don't have the enzymes. You don't have the nails. You don't have all the products you need to build the chemistry that makes your body work. Therefore, you become chronically fatigued because it's just you can never make it so it tries to do all kinds of other things people become obese trying to find the chemistry to make their body work because your body will instruct you what to do if you can't find the molecules it may say just keep eating something else and maybe it'll you'll find some in there I don't know how your body exactly works but I can tell you one thing right now obesity is is well linked to bad bacteria in your gut as well. Everything is linked to that. Because without that, you are nothing. You're not even alive. Literally, I'm telling you right now, I don't think you're alive at all. The only thing that does anything in you is the bacteria. That is the life. And that is the life is in the blood. Remember this. Your heart starts pumping. They, the first thing they do is start running up and pumping your chest like this and pumping oxygen into you to try to get your body to continue to live. That blood stops moving, the case is closed. Four or five minutes, it's over. And the reason is the transfer of chemistry is not happening. Respiration is not happening. The molecules that do these transitions of all of the things, these factories in your body that are chemistry factories, they make everything work. Every single cell in your body is 100% continuously saturated with other chemistry that invades, they call them nucleophiles. And they, they, they come in and they go out. You have invading groups and leaving groups. And all they do is transfer pr primarily from this range here, the transition metals, iron for your oxygen and so forth, and then all of these other ones carry around molecules in oxidation states and they drop them off and pick things up and they the enzymes just do the job the enzymes are like little smarty guys in there they run I'm sorry the enzymes are the product of the bacteria the bacteria work together and once you kill them they, they, they there's nobody there to work all right I 
I want you to look at something carefully. You see all this detail that's inside of the human body. You see all this blood flowing down, coming back, going through all these organs. What does all that do? They add enzymes. Your pancreas, your gallbladder, your digestive system, your rectum. All of these different organs, your lungs, all, they all are changing the molecules inside your body continuously, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And as soon as it stops moving that blood, which is the mover and shaker of the chemistry, you're done. And what happens is between every single organ and every single layer of tissue, you have membranes. Those membranes are where that specific bacteria lives. Specific. And when I say specific, I mean specific. Around your pancreas, you have an exact type of, of bacterial colony. That's it. It has to deal with a certain type of chemistry around your kidneys, around your heart, around your lungs, around your brain, around your eyeballs, around your testicles, or whatever, if you don't have testicles, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Every single membrane in your body is saturated with good bacteria if it is healthy. That is your protection. It creates mucus, it creates catalysts, it creates enzymes, it creates the digestive juices. It does everything and it does it only because it has a good, healthy population living in the membrane on its surface, which is the protective rubber bag. Just like you put things in a baggie. Same thing here. Once you put a hole in that baggie, it's leaking. Now what happens? It gets invaded. What happens then? You're sick. Why would it get invaded? Because the bacteria that lived in all of these organs on these membranes aren't there to protect you because you took antibiotics or some other food that killed that or weakened it so much that you are now in a pre-existing pre condition. So that if something gets down on there in your lungs, you start inhaling stuff, and you have holes in your lungs or your throat or your nose, boop, it's going to jump right in there. A lot of people don't get sick. They're exposed to the exact same thing that the guy right standing next to him is. That guy gets sick, boop, he's dead. The other guy walks home, he's happy, having a nice day. Two different sets of bacteria. I'm, I'm almost 100% certain of that now. In my mind, I am 100% certain, and I think it needs to be taken extremely seriously. All right, so the, the bottom line here is we need to get a co chemical cocktails that are healthy bacteria, so that we can put them into people so that they can resist these terrible diseases. And they have been using FMT, which is a, a microbiome transplant, where they f just flush you with all healthy bacteria and within 24 to 48 hours normally the person starts to come totally out of a dying situation I'm not kidding you it's that fast and it's because the bugs start doing their job instantaneously once they get into that interstitium it's all over they just zip they go right where they need to go and they are smart they have all of their little programs built in to create these enzymes which I showed you those elegant 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 molecules and the reason they are necessary, they have magnetic signatures on them, and they find the things, they're called magnetobacteria, and they find the things to attach and kill and squirt the enzymes in and kill them. That's your protective system, and that's your membrane. That's the interstitium. All right, so what is the takeaways? We're talking about getting really angry and upset and violent and everything, and I, I know what causes that is like constipation. I'm not kidding you, that relates to this kind of aggressive behavior. Now, what other things can we draw to look at other types of behaviors like chronic fatigue? You just can't get around, you just can't move. You don't have any energy. Well, why don't you have the energy? What bacteria is missing that would create the energy? These guys apparently like have too much energy. They just, they are, they're tense all the time and these other people have no energy at all. Is that a relationship? We need to look at things in a whole different way. And there was this thing I saw, Ted Lasso, be curious, not judgmental. What I get mostly is pushback from 
the experts say, we're the experts, you don't know anything about this, we've been studying this for 50 years. Well, they, people just get getting worse and worse. So I don't think that's any big accolade that they've been doing this for 50 years and they haven't been successful. I like to get successful a little quicker than that. <laughs> All right, I think I've pretty much shown you everything you need to know about the reason you, your bacteria goes bad is because mostly it's antibiotics and just assaults from the environment, such as these burn pit guys. They have they have virtually no immune system left, none. They have been assaulted in every square inch of their body, inside and out, by being around these burn pits. Acids, salts, paint, um, explosives, tires, battery acid, you know, plastics, anything you can think of, they burned it. They just put it in a pile and burned it, and they had to stand around and watch. Now, what happens when you lose all that bacteria? Mitochondrial dysfunction and chronic disease. Mitochondria is, is a very important for your energetic levels. And this is treatment with natural supplements. This is, this is the National Library of Medicine, so they're looking into this. Loss of function in micro uh, in mitochondria, the key organelle responsible for cellular energy production. So in the, every cell, you need energy. And this mitochondria is the thing that is key to that. So loss of that function can result in the excess fatigue and other symptoms that are common complaints in almost every chronic disease. Anytime you're tired, you're tired. You, you don't have energy. Well, there's a lot of things that go into energy. And we're going to explore them all. At the molecular level, now they're down into the electrons, which is the range I like to work in too. At the molecular level, a reduction in mitochondrial function occurs as a result of the following changes. Now, how they determine this, I don't know, but I would like to know. Number one change is a loss of maintenance of the electrical and chemical transmembrane potential of the inner mitochondrial membrane. Exactly what I'm talking about is membranes. Well, why does it lose this electrical communication? Why? What facilitates that electrical communication? That's the kind of things I want to look at. Now, number two is alterations in the function of the electron transport chain. All right? Electron transport chain is basically what I am talking about right here is these transition metals. That's the transport chain. They have deep energy orbitals that they can absorb other electrons, the oxidation states, and they can carry other electrons around and drop them off. So we need those transition metals in their particular, you know, atomic form, and something has to break them down to get to that form. That would be an enzyme or a protein. I mean, a catalyst. Now, so now we're at number two is the electron transport chain. We've talked about that. Number three, a reduction in the transport of critical metabolites into mitochondria. Metabolites are the breakdown products. You need to transport them, but you, first of all, you need to have them. Those are the products that are created from the breakdown of food. All right. In turn, these changes result in reduced efficiency of oxidative. Remember I talked about that? Transition metals are the oxidative state metals. And a reduction in production of all of these things that you need to be healthy. See, here's the metabolites, substance made when a body breaks down food, drugs, or chemicals. And you don't even make it breaks down its own tissue, because you have to get rid of dead, dead tissue. Your body is so elegant, and the lymphatic system takes care of all that crap that dies in your body that has to get taken out. And if you don't have the correct chemistry there to break that down, you get lymphatic cancers, because that you, that's the dump. Now, this is really incredible. I've been following, trying to understand the digestive process and all of the membranes and so forth for many years now. This went back to 2014, this article. This is almost 10 years, 8 years ago. 
oral natural supplements containing membrane phospholipids, which is COQ10, whatever that is, microencapsulated NADH, keratin, lipic acid, other nutrients can help restore mitochondrial function and reduce intractable fatigue in patients with chronic illness. Now, that's what they said combination of these supplements can result in a safe and effective method to reduce fatigue and help restore quality of life. I think I have some of this stuff around here. Hold on a second. Yeah, look at that. Alpha lipoic acid. There it is right there. Alpha lipoic acid. I must have read about it somewhere at some point. I got a whole bottle of them. Apparently, I can't remember when I got them, but I don't know if they have any expiration date. <laughs> anyway, um, the membranes are the key. It's all about membranes, membrane phospholipic acids. You need this stuff to protect you in the membrane. Let me just show you the membrane. And this is brand new research. They just realized these things existed, to be honest with you, that it is of the importance that it is. They knew, they knew it was there. They just didn't realize how important it was. It's now considered an organ system. All right, I don't want to go too crazy here because I've done this about a million times. It's a, this layer right here. It's between your skin or your digestive system or whatever. And then you have a layer of interstitium, which is this fluid-filled highway that protects this layer, which is your inside stuff. So this is outside. You don't want any of that getting through except the stuff you want because you have to absorb stuff through here. So you have to have some very sophisticated gatekeepers here to allow only the right stuff through, keep all the bad stuff out. They create slime and mucus, because this is the mucosa they call it, or in the outside of your body, it's the skin. Inside it's the mucosa on your organs and so forth. And that's the membrane, that's the membrane right there. That's the whole, well, actually this is the membrane. So, it, you know, you have a coating on the top and then you have the membrane which contains the interstitial layer. Now, let me show you that. Remember I talked about the transition metal oxidation states? This is it right here. They, they're colored compounds and complexes that carry around with something called ligands. They're little pinchers that, because of these oxidation states, they can carry around molecules, drop them off, and pick up stuff, and take it to the dump. That's what the transition metals do. And they are in the blood. That's what's in your blood. You just saw those colors. This is a heart. It's an opal heart, and it was preserved in such a manner as all the transition metals found molecules that they were happy to attach to to become stable. This proves that, that this stuff is in the blood. All right, this is the interstitium I was talking about. In these fluid-filled bags live these bacterias, and what they do is they just colonize these this region. Now, this is the top which seals you from the invaders which are up here, which would be in your guts, on your skin, on your eyeballs. Everything has a membrane. They call it the mucosa. And what happens is this can have slime on it, which is also produced by the bacteria to slime things to keep it away. Now, what if the thing is tougher than the slime and starts to invade and start biting into this stuff? You should be able to to harness a whole batch of fighters to come out there to kill that thing. That's what they do. That's your immune system. And that's done by the bacteria as well. Now, what else happens from the bacteria? You need food. You need to break down all these things that are coming through your guts. It squirts out stuff and says, hey, I need some catalysts over here. I need some enzymes. I need this. I need that. I need some acids. I need some salts. We've got to break this down. We've got to get some metals. We've got to get some glucose. We've got to get all kinds of chemistry. And they go out and they break it down. So now it's broken down out there. Big deal. You need to get it into your body. Well, what happens then? The membrane has gatekeepers and says, hey, ooh, 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 that, go, go, go grab that guy. Bring him down in here. We need him. Zip, comes down. It brings it down here, they collect it all up, zip, send it out to wherever it has to go. These bacterias and enzymes and so forth, well, that bacteria specifically have a flagella on it. They can, it spins 100,000 times a, a minute. And this is a fluid-filled highway, they call it now. That's why it's a new organ system. 
there's a basement layer down here, and this is just the membrane layer. Every single thing in your body has one. 100% of your body, between tissue layers, or between you and the world, your skin is nothing more than this as well as your eyeball stuff that's on the edge of your eyeballs. You know, it's everywhere. Whatever separates one layer from another is called the membrane, and that's it. And this is what is getting killed, the bacteria that lives here. So now your body says, ooh, ooh I need to grab one of these guys to send out someone. So he says, well, there's none of them, no more of those guys left. What happened? Oh, the guy had a, a root canal. They gave him a couple of antibiotic pills that killed the guy. So what are we going to do? Well, we're in trouble. Now, if you take probiotics, if you could get the live ones and, and repopulate your body, when you go back there living there, you're good, done. But if you at least if you can put probiotics in here and have some of these things floating around in here that to do the job if they're necessary, that's about the second best you can do at this point. But a new microbiome flush is absolutely the way to go, in my mind. And again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you to do anything or don't do anything. I'm just saying this is what the research indicates.